Hi, I'm Larry Krieg. Three weeks ago, August 6, I put up a video for you about how high-speed rail seemed like it would never come to southeast Michigan. Trains kept getting slower and slower. Today, August 22nd, work started to speed things up. Thought you might like to see what it takes to get trains moving at normal, moderate speed. A lot of men and machines. I'll take you through the process really fast. First step, get the old rotten ties out from under the rails. Well, the ties are held to the rails by nine inch spikes, huge nails that have to come out first. Can't leave the spikes lying around though. Gotta pick them up. Rails are held to the ties by plates, which have to be moved aside. The old ties can then be taken out as rails are raised slightly. Not all the old ties are bad, so some will be left in place. New ties will have to be positioned so they can be pushed under the rails. Now the new wooden ties can be put under the rails where the old ones were. Tie plates are moved back into position by men on foot using rods so they don't strain their backs. New spikes will be used to fasten the rails to the ties, and they have to be loaded into the spiking machines from a truck. Spiking machines are called top gun for some reason. So men follow along behind using good old-fashioned sledgehammers to get them all in. Tie plates are fastened to the rails using steel loops, a bit like staples. This machine is the stapler, but the quality of the track depends on the gravel bed it lies on as well as the ties. The gravel under the rails tends to spread out over the years, and removing the old ties hasn't helped. This machine, rather like a road grader, is scraping up the gravel so it's next to the track. On curves, the outside edge needs to be raised, whether you're talking about highways or railroads. The precise amount of super-elevation, as it's called, determines the speed vehicles can safely go. The machine we see coming here makes sure the outside rail is exactly the right height whether on a straight stretch or a curve. It does that by pushing the gravel up under the rails to a precise height. The height is determined by a set of three laser measuring devices focused on reflectors mounted far ahead on the machine's fold-out extension. Once the precise height of the rails is achieved, gravel under each of the ties needs to be stirred up. This provides better drainage to prevent water from covering the rails when it rains hard. The gravel also needs to be evened out and smoothed. Another road grader-like machine works back and forth along the track to do this. Before the job is done, though, the rails and ties need to be swept off to prevent gravel from flying around when trains run by. One more job has to be done, but not today. That's resurfacing the rails. These rails have enough metal left on them that they don't need to be replaced, but they do need to be smoothed out. That'll be done another day. This track crew can repair about three miles of track every day. They'll work through the section between Ipsy and Chelsea. Meanwhile, other crews are working on other problems between Ypsilanti and Kalamazoo. They expect to get done mid-September. It won't be too soon for us.